so we're going to move into, um, I got two more topics. Uh, this one, this next one's going to be a quicker one. And we're just going to talk about the Nintendo Switch. We are about six weeks or so out from when it launched. And just how we feel about the system and um, about how successful it's been. And to put this in perspective, uh, the same day we're recording this, Nintendo just re- uh, released their, they like confirmed the MPD report, which is that the Switch sold 905,000 units in March. Um, Breath of the Wild for Switch sold 925,000 units. So if you do the math, that means it sold more copies of Breath of the Wild than actual Switches existed. Um, it's really interesting. Nintendo has a theory about it, but they can't prove it, about people just buying collector's editions and not opening it and then rebuying the game. But even then, the fact that like they had more Breath of the Wild units out there than actual Switch units is really interesting. Um, and that they sold 1.4 million total uh, you know, Breath of the Wild units, which obviously means the rest of it had was on Wii U. Um, and also that Breath of the Wild is the most successful launch game in Nintendo's history. Uh, and at first I questioned that because, you know, Nintendo Land was packed in with the Wii. So it was literally anyone who bought a Wii during launch had Nintendo Land. But again, it was packed in with the Wii. It didn't sell more copies than actual Wiis existed. Right. <laughs> So, so Breath of the Wild has a beat, um, outside of the fact that also there was more Switch units available than, than Wii units in that first month. Um, so we have some background now into how successful everything was for Nintendo, for Zelda, for the Switch. So we've all had our Switch. Like, Darren, Darren you, you got a Switch. Eric has yep. a Switch. I have a Switch. I, me and Eric have had it since day one. Did you get yours day one, too? I did. Okay, so we've all had it for six weeks, um, and obviously the game most of us have played. Like, might, might be the only game we played is Breath of the Wild. Um, I mean, I've played some other games, but I haven't purchased really anything since that day one beyond Snipper Clips. Um, and there are some other games I want. Like, I want Snake Pass. It looks fantastic. It's it, it's an indie game. If you actually go play mm-hmm. the demo, oh, it's so good. Um, so th- there's other games I want, but again, I feel like I need to finish Breath of the Wild before I can truly move on. Right. Yeah. Um, and the God knows if I'm ever going to finish Breath of the Wild. So, Darren, you, you've had this system for six weeks. Has your opinion of it changed from day one to now? Um, yes. Mm, it's kind of weird because, as I said when I picked it up, I was going to just use it as a home console. I uh, wasn't really going to take it places. and I And I still don't because I don't game on the go much but I use it primarily in handheld mode. So my opinion of it has changed in its general usefulness because I can just lay in bed and play Breath of the Wild. Like, I don't have to sit up in front of the TV or my monitor or whatever. Um, Basically, right now, it's a Breath of the Wild machine because I have no other game (laughs) for it. (laughs) Um, Like, I might get Snake Pass, like a city undercover... Might get Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but might, maybe not because I'm, I'm not sure if there's enough content to justify me purchasing it after playing the crap out of sure. the game on Wii U. Uh, so basically Snake Pass, and I probably won't get Spectre of Torment either because I have uh, Treasure Trove on both Steam and 3DS, and I'll probably just play it on Steam. Mm-hmm. So... Okay. I definitely still think it's a great console. Uh, just my yeah. opinion has changed uh, on its usefulness. Like, I, it's just, it, I definitely use it differently than I thought I would. Uh, playing Breath of the Wild, I thought I was just going to play it for like 24 hours straight and then die. And then when I woke up, play it for another 24 hours. But that's really not what I did. I just kind of played it in a couple hours of increments uh, over the course of a couple weeks and then beat the game. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Now, clarify, you didn't 100% the game. I have not 100% of the game. Uh, I have completed 120 shrines, uh, all main quests completed. Okay, so all the shrines. Um, yep. And I have about half my Short armor on upgraded. Need to upgrade more of that. I have like f- seventy-five Korok seeds, so 
I'm severely lacking with that. A long way to go with that. Yeah. So, I mean, I haven't finished the game. I haven't played it in a couple days. Uh, I do plan on 100%ing it. It's just going to take a long time. Eventually. And I'm not even scared about the Korok seeds. That's the easy part. The hard part is getting all the materials to upgrade the armor, like the ungodly Uh amount of star bits that you need. (laughs) Like, I already yeah. got all the Lionel parts. I have the Barbarian armor fully upgraded. Like, that was a piece of cake. Just go through and and grind Lionels all day. But, ugh, oh, yeah. star bits. That, that's gonna suck. <laughs> um, so, Eric. You have had your Switch for six weeks. You finally have, by the way, the nice glass protector on it. Oh, yeah. Congrats. Yeah, I know, right? Um... I feel like it's almost essential, to be honest. Yeah. But you got convinced of the Switch because of Breath of the Wild. Because you didn't own a Wii U, and if you're going to play Breath of the Wild, you might as well get the latest and greatest right. instead of you know going to an older system. Which right. it's, you can't really find Wii U's brand new anyway. So, yeah, right. I mean, you, know, you deal with the used market, who knows what quality you're going to get. Um, has your opinion changed on the Switch from day one to now? No. I still love it. I, I mean, and, I don't and you play love it, every it day. owning only one game. Yes, <laughs> that is very, very, very true. Um, I don't play it every day, but when I do, it, I am completely involved and into I it. No, I can't get you to do anything. But <laughs> like, we'll be upstairs. Sorry, excuse me. We'll be upstairs, and there'll be a Brewer game. We'll be playing Madden. He'll bust out his switch, and like, I can't get him to do what he's supposed to do with his team on Madden because he's too. Like, he's so into Zelda, he can't stop. Yeah. Um, and I, I think we all understand. <laughs> uh, people at home that have played it, you, you understand. Once you get into it, like, it's hard to pull yourself out. It, I do have... The only complaint that I've had is that I've had it freeze on me a couple times. The, the Switch freeze yep. on you? Yep. Did Where you have to hard reboot it? Yep. Where just had, it, had to hold down the power button and did. That that did happen. Remember, I told you that happened yep. to me once. Um, yep. That's happened to me at least twice, if not three times. No. Okay. So I, I've had it happen once. I I don't remember anything specifically that triggered it. Like I was playing it for too long, or had it in the dock and overheated, or I was doing a certain thing in the game that triggered it and it repeated it because it only happened once for me. So like, um, I have noticed that when I've set it down and it kind of goes to sleep. Yeah, on sli- its own, something. and then it comes back out, and it goes to sleep for a so you, you fairly sleep. extended period of yeah. time. Like, if I'll be playing it for a good chunk of time, yeah. set it down, it'll go to sleep and be asleep for a long, fairly decent period of time, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then try to bring it back up, and that's, that's when happened. I've noticed it's yeah, happening. Okay, yeah, there's other people that have said that they've noticed it happens coming out of sleep mode. Um, again, I haven't had it happen. Like, my sleep mode will be something that's be for, like, three days, and I'll come back in. It's just mm-hmm. fine. Uh, maybe it's because I always come back into the home menu. I always hit the home button three times instead of hitting A and popping right back into that uh, game. Yeah, um, could be. And that's always been kind of a habit of mine, I guess. With any anytime I turn on a console, I like going to the home menu. I know the 3DS was different because you just flip it open and you're back in the game. But with this system, when it's like, oh, you need to do three button presses, I always felt like, I don't know, it just feels nice going to that home menu quick because well, I got to see, you know, do I have any updates? Right, not game? just that, but this or that? not just that, but it it shows the home button on the screen so your mind automatically oh goes no that's not like the very first too. time i did it was like, the a button oh really yeah because you can do it with anybody yeah, so no, it'll say oh tap right. that button again two more yeah I right use but the a button. to me well for me it was i saw the home button so i was like oh home okay home home yeah, yeah. i didn't really read it i just went off the visual oh, cue yeah yeah and then i was like oh i can actually use any button so yeah. and then i've started using a yeah. but it i when i first started it was like oh hey look home button and, and that kind of gets into, so we're a month out, and outside of the one time it froze on me and I had to hard reset it, which, again, not a big deal. We I, I think all of us at some point in our lives have had consumer electronics. We've had a hard reset. How many times have we had a hard reset that Xbox because my son messes with it? Like, And it's not the Xbox's fault. Like My son really, really <laughs> messes with that thing. Hitting the, that home button like 70,000 times. I think it's, it's so confused at what's going on. Um, I can't blame it. Like, if he, if he bashed the freaking power button on my computer, he'd probably fry something. Like, it's just my... Yeah. I, it's life of a parent with a one-year-old. Um, but 
outside of like the one time I had it happen, I haven't had anything bad happen, anything negative happen. And there's been a lot of stuff that that people have complained about. There's the left Joy-Con issue, which Nintendo says is not a defect; it's a manufacturing variation. Um, which defect? Defect. That that's what a defect is. Something went wrong in the manufacturing process. That's a defect. Um, that they fix, like they'll fix it for free. You send it in, they'll get it back to you in less than a week. They'll fix it for free. They put a little conductive foam piece which nullifies the metal that's blocking the signal, and blah blah blah. blah. It works sometimes even better than the right Joy-Con does. Um, and you know, there's obviously been like the screen scratching again, oversight by Nintendo. That is a mistake, legit thing. They should have put some padding in the dock. As soon as they went with plastic screens to. Um, save on costs. They should have been like, yeah, we can't have plastic rub on plastic. I, I don't understand how the heck they didn't think about that. No, even coming across it in testing. Well, because you got to remember in testing, they get things that are perfect. So like, here, here here's what's causing it, okay? Because people are like, I don't understand how it even happens. And I get it because if you have a dock that is perfectly, like everything's perfect with it, it won't happen. You'd mm-hmm. have to try to make it happen. Like, when you put it in there, there's space. You're not actually rubbing up against that plastic. There is space. But not everyone's dock is like that. A lot of docks are a little slightly bent, mm-hmm. either bent in or bent out, and that causes the thing to shift when you're putting it in, and then you get to scratch. Um, and I get bet you that Nintendo, especially when it's coming from the manufacturer, they're getting absolutely 100% perfect stuff, so they don't find any issues with it, so they okay the manufacturing at that manufacturer. Yeah. Um, so that's why, like, you know, think about think about the press events that were out there. How many times at those press events was that single switch unit lifted in and out of that dock, and there was never a scratch? Because, again, the dock was a perfectly designed dock. It wasn't going to happen. Or at least you'd have to try to make it happen. Um, and I think that's what happened is that Nintendo didn't see it in their own testing because the manufacturer didn't give them a normal run. They gave them the best run they can make. Um and that sucks. And I think now that Nintendo knows that, I can see, like, now they're starting to sell the dock independent. You can go to store.nintendo.com and buy your own dock for 60 bucks, which I'm surprised that's $30 cheaper than they said the dock costs. So that, that's nice. I mean, I know people still say, oh, it's 60 bucks. I'm like, yeah, but again, go look at USB-C to HDMI dongles out there. 60 bucks is actually on the lower end. Um, $90 is on the higher end. So, like, the, it actually kind of fits right in the sweet spot for what it does. But, um, because people are like, oh, I'm paying that for a piece of plastic. No, you're paying that for the the C to the power adapter and the HDMI. Like, that stuff's not cheap. Um, I know people like to think it's really cheap, but it's not. Um, anyways, so they did, the, they're releasing that dock as a separate thing. And I think in these second and third runs of docks, I wouldn't be surprised if they start coming with some felt in there or, or, or some soft material just for, just to, take care of the manufacturing variation that is occurring with the docks um, that's causing the scratching to be more frequently happening. But again, because it has a plastic screen, I always suggest everyone go get tempered glass. Oh, definitely. It makes a huge difference. Uh, you, you, I mean, you can get like the hoary screen protectors. They suck. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they're, I'm sure, you know, the, when, when they get a, a new, like when hoary gets a new run of these screen protectors out there, they'll probably be better because like the, the film screen protectors aren't usually as bad as these ones are. So, the next batch is probably better. Heck, they might already be better now. But still, do yourself a favor. It's a, it's a plastic screen. Don't put a piece of plastic to protect plastic. Mm-hmm. Put a nice tempered glass thing on there. Make it feel like a phone. Looks pristine. You forget it's even there. Um, and you won't have to worry about scratches. You won't have to worry about breaking your screen. Not that you have to worry about breaking your screen so much with a plastic screen anyways. But you still got to worry about scratches to take care of that. Um, and it does not add like such a big layer to it that it creates scratching problems when you put it in the dock. No, not at all. There, there's still give. There's still room. Um, but, you know, the I, I guess maybe the biggest issue that's happened since then is what, what I have dubbed as Switch Bengate. And, again, I apologize. Someone came up with a better name in the comments for it. Now I forgot. Um, where some people's switches are physically bending. Um, and I'm actually curious to look at yours. I've already looked at mine. Go so, for it. I just want to see, and the the bends are very slight that mm-hmm. people have talked about. Like we're talking like a couple of millimeters, mm-hmm. um, so it's not always even noticeable to the naked eye. I'm just kind of laying this down flat here. See, there might be a little bend. It's either the table or or just we'd have to 
you'd have to uh we have to make sure that we're on a perfect like 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 my desk table over there that's not perfectly flat we have to make sure we're on a perfectly flat surface to double check that but you know and when i look at this it looks like you might have a very slight bend and the thing is mine doesn't i've already tested mine it does not have a bend um and people are saying it's because like the system's overheating and it's melting the plastic and it's warping um and did some research into that, and I did a whole video on it. I'll link that video down in the description that went over um, what likely is that it's very likely the switch came that way, and it, it just passed manufacturing because it doesn't make a difference. Um, and anything like, like if I didn't tell you it, you wouldn't even know. Mm -hmm. So it, it's one of those things like it doesn't really matter. It's irrelevant. Um, now, that's not to say that there, are, there haven't been bending that's occurred. Like uh, the, I have a few commenters that did say that they already looked at their unit. It was not bent when they got it, and now it is bent. And that's very interesting to me because that means it didn't happen at the factory. It happened when you owned it. Now, there's a lot of reasons you can explain this. Um, one person said, well, I was holding it, and then my kid came and grabbed and hung off the middle of it. Well, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. You physically bent it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and then I also wonder, like, are people, like, when they hold it, are they gripping too hard and, like, pressing in, pressing, you know, yeah. did, did, are they trying to do it? Did they, uh, you know, when they throw it in their backpack, is it protected with a proper protector? Um, or is it being just, like, bashed around by books and everything? Like, there's a lot of scenarios that, without me knowing all the information, I can't possibly know what caused the bend. Um, and obviously the very last possibility is that it got too hot. And for it to get too hot, the fan would have to fail. Um, because it's got to get somewhere around 600 degrees or so Fahrenheit for that plastic to be pliable enough to bend. Um, and that's because the plastication process with the hardening stuff they use, that's actually how long, how, what kind of heat it would take to bend this kind of plastic. Um, to, to bend it with heat, that is. Like, you could obviously physically bend it. Um, like, you know, and yes, if you got it hot enough, you could physically bend it maybe easier. Just like, you know, heat of a plastic bottle, of course you can bend it easier. But it's it, it's just highly unlikely that heat on its own. Like, so it's, oh, I put it in my dock, and it's never been out of the dock, and I took it out of the dock, and it's bent. Well, if it's never been out of the dock, did you test it before you put it in the dock in the first place? Mm -hmm. It could have been bent when you got it. But it, it's one of those, if you have a bent switch, and you know for 100% sure it was not bent when you got it, um, start asking yourself, what have you been doing with the switch that possibly could have led to it being bent? Like, even if you didn't do anything weird with it, maybe you have it just laying down, like I do here, like normally, just sitting there, and you notice how it's suspended in the air a little bit here. Did you set something on top of it? You're put, yeah. putting pressure on a gap. Yeah. You could create sure. a, you could create a bend. Uh, I know some people said, well, maybe it's the metal inside bending. Fun fact, this hard shell if you look at the iFixit breakdown that's this is what everything is screwed into it's not screwed into the metal the metal and everything is screwed into the hard plates so the plastic is the frame of everything just like the uh the, the framework of my computer it is the case well that's the same thing's true here everything is screwed into the plastic so the plastic would have to bend for there to be a bend uh the, the little metal heat plate isn't going to make the plastic bend um and I did see someone who had a battery issue, it looked like, because they uh, up on the port up here by the switch card, it was melting. Ooh. Um, that's not good, obviously. What, are uh, they trying to pull a Nokia? Or not yeah, a Nokia, no, I know, a Samsung? Samsung Galaxy Tab 2. No, no, Note 2. Note 7. Note 7. Note 7. Note 7. I thought it was Note the 7. 2. Or no. Anyways, anyways <laughs> whatever it was, um, yeah, uh, I think he, had, he almost had a battery leak. And the thing is, that can happen with lithium batteries. Not a widespread issue like it was with Samsung. Um, where clearly, there were, it was a design flaw. Because they were using similar batteries to a different product, but obviously something to do with heat dissipation yeah, yeah. was not working, and the battery right. overheated consistently, no matter what tweaks they made. They, uh, it sucks because it, it was a really nice device. Um, it almost made me want to switch off of off of Apple until that started happening. I'm really glad I didn't switch. Yeah. Even though Samsung was replacing things, who knows what I would have burned down with it before that happened. <laughs> right. Whole house up in smoke. Um, so, yeah, a month out, I... Outside of the issues some people have had, I haven't had any of it. I love it. I use it exactly like I thought I would. Take it with me. Use it wherever I want. Use it when my kids are up. You know, i got to watch Ali, and he's just playing. Bust out my Switch. Um, put it back in the dock when I'm downstairs on the TV. Use it like that. Use the Pro Controller. You know, use the Joy-Cons separately. I've held them out like this. I've used them sideways. Everything works even almost better than I thought because holding them sideways works better than I thought it would. 
I, I'm a month out and I own you know three or four games, and I'm happy. And there's more games that are out already that I want, but I'm waiting until I finish Breath of the Wild because I just know because of how I, it's happened with Snipper Clips, it's happened with Just Dance, it's happened with um, One Two Switch. Is that while I've played those games. I'm really just forcing myself to play them rather than wanting to because I know I need to finish Breath of the Wild. I'm mm-hmm. only like 12% done with Breath of the Wild. I have so much further to go. It's crazy. So I guess I guess my impressions is that it, it's, it's obviously selling well and Breath of the Wild is doing well and uh, the system is better to me today than it was when I bought it. All the concerns I had about it kind of went away. Um, even people that have issues putting the straps on and off, I've never this never been a problem for me. Um, and again, I keep t- trying to remind myself there. I I, I want to make a video guide on how to properly take the straps off because I think what's happening is people don't understand why the straps get stuck. Um, and it has to do it, it's a leverage situation. People aren't thinking about why is it so smooth coming off this heavy device, but it's not so smooth coming off a thing that weighs less than an ounce. Mm-hmm. Because you're the leverage, you need to leverage it differently than you would with the switch. Um, again, it may, I, I really need to make a how-to video on it on that because I don't think anyone's done it yet. Everyone has just said these things suck and we're not going to use them. Well, they don't suck actually; they're awesome. Like in Snipper Clips, they are amazing. They're going to be awesome in Mario Kart too. So, um, as for games, I'm looking forward to obviously Mario Kart Eight. I'm getting it. I, I know Darren's not. <laughs> I said I might. I probably won't. Might, but. might. You probably, uh, if you do get it, I see it being like a down the line thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. I'm very satisfied with what's coming out. Obviously, we talked a lot about like payday two. I really want payday two, um, and having it in portable form is just going to be fantastic. Uh, might be the first game if it supports it that we do local multiplayer on. Well, Mario Kart might be, but. Besides that, like a first third-party game, we might try to do a local multiplayer. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, with two different switches. That's going to be sweet. Uh, but it'll be even sweet when we live stream it because, like, we'll like both be sitting here playing. Like, I'll be playing on the TV. You'll be playing on the thing. And I'll just be like, yeah, dude, this is sick. Right. We're both in the same game right now, live streaming on two different devices. Right. Mind blown.